62 mass, check. Interesting black dial, check. Date at the six o'clock position, check. Brace it with a four millimeter taper, check. 20 millimeter lug width, check. 40 millimeters wide, check. 12.5 millimeters thick, check. And all oh, drilled lugs, check. And also it's got a freaking gray bezel that's also loomed. I mean, check. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm not really sure I could possibly ask for more and in so many ways this is like the best 62 mass homage out there which is saying a lot because i absolutely love my san martin sn 007 so basically what islander did is that they took the best elements of the spb 143 and the original 62 mass and combined them and they added their own flare in fixed pretty much every problem that i had with you know both the spb 143 and the san martin except for one thing that is kind of surprisingly off. So in this video, I'm gonna go into what I think about how it wears and feels on the wrist, and then we're gonna take a closer look at the details, like the dial and the bezel, just so you know what's going on. So uh, yeah, let's see what happens and uh, let's get into it. So first thing I noticed when I saw the watch for the first time is that it wears much smaller than other 62 mass watches like the uh, San Martin and the SPV143 from Seiko and I think that mainly comes down to the indices being more svelte than you know those of the San Martin and then the bezel isn't as chunky as the SPV143 bezel. But the really interesting thing is that the dimensions are pretty much exactly the same as the SPV143 and the San Martin. And yeah, for me, the Islander on the wrist looks like a full on 40 millimeter watch, whereas the SPV wears like a big chunky 40 millimeter watch and the San Martin wears more like a 41 millimeter watch. And not much difference is obviously between those two, but like still, it this is, smaller so yeah i mean i'm loving the size no matter how many tricks my eyes are playing on me at this point <laughs> also the other thing to note is that this comes in at 12.5 millimeters compared to the spb's 13.9 millimeters and then the san martin's 14.1 millimeters which you know sounds amazing but in reality the thickness came down just because this has a flat sapphire crystal whereas the other ones have dome sapphire crystals so yeah without the crystal the san martin is the same thickness so yeah, think about that before, you know, jumping to conclusions about watch thicknesses just based off of the number, you know, but in practice, it does help make it wear a bit thinner than the other two watches, but you know, not by that much. But uh, yeah, the curvy SPB type case is, you know, what really does help make this wear quite thin. And also it's got the same lug to lug as the SPB 143 at 47.6 millimeters, which makes it wear that much better. So the dial is the big talking point over here because Ryan and Mark did a great job to put this dial in here because it's something that I haven't really seen before and it does add a whole bunch of visual interest while not being like way too out there and bold and yeah I mean I love dials like this just because you know a lot of the time it does look just like a black dial if that's what you're going for but then when you look at it just in, you know just as the light changes then you get to see a bit more of what the dial has to offer and then direct light then you get to see you know all of the details over here so Mark calls it the ripple dial and it does look like ripples and you know waves in the water but the first thing that I thought of when I saw the dial was, you know, those old spider dial Rolex watches, you know, where the dial is cracked and uh, yeah, but then you see the ripple. So yeah, kind of a combination of both. No, oh, and since we have a flat sapphire crystal, that means that we can actually look at the dial without, you know, just endless reflections just coming in and just taking away from the actual effect of the dial. And onto the rest of the dial, and we've got a traditional, you know, 62 mass style indices and hands and the indices are you know, nicely three-dimensional and they are polished nicely and the hands are you know solidly finished but the main thing that i love about the hands are that they are perfectly sized i mean meaning that their general size is spot on in relation to the rest of the dial but the big thing is that they are perfect in length as well so the hour hand just barely kisses the bottom edges of the indices and the minute in seconds hand just graze the top edges of those same indices and also the 12 o'clock marker isn't as wide as the other 62 mass style watches so yeah when i look at the watch i mean sometimes it feels like a completely different watch and i don't see a 62 mass watch so i mean and i guess i kind of mean that in a good way just because it's nice to have a little change while still getting the 62 mass feel but you know it's not as pure 62 mass in its uh, execution. So take that how you will. So I guess it's a better homage in that way. 
And finally, we have the date window at the six with a really nice polished frame. And this is something that I've said, you know, many times before, but you know, six o'clock date windows are the best. And if you're gonna have a date window, just embrace it. I mean, don't make it an afterthought. And here, it definitely is not an afterthought. Then we have this date window in this position because it's using the Miyota 9015 movement, which is, you know, higher beat movement compared to most of uh, Seiko's movements. And yeah, I mean, it's a solid movement and I like it. And I like that you can actually hear and feel the clicks when you're winding it up. Oh, and I'm liking the loom because it's pretty good overall. Everything is loomed up, even the logo and the name, which is really cool. But the indices aren't as good as they could have been. I mean, it would have been nice to have seen them be on the same level as the hands and the bezel, but still really good stuff. So, I mean, the dial is awesome, but for me, it's, I mean, the bezel is where I completely seal the deal because this one has a fully loomed gray ceramic bezel. And if anyone has seen like pretty much any of my videos, you, I mean, you'll know that I love gray, just like all gray, everything for me. So I think it just works so well here and it helps differentiate the watch from you know just the the countless other black bezel ceramic you know black ceramic bezels out there also the font of the bezel is really good just because it's not the usual seiko or submariner font but you know it's a rather bold and modern look but without looking sort of cartoonish oh and we've got a really great coin edge bezel which is nice and grippy and probably my favorite kind of bezel so yeah i mean overall couldn't ask for more. Also in Mark's release video, you know, he mentioned that there is a sort of tinge of green and I can see the tinge of green sometimes. I mean, it's not much, but when it is next to other gray things, you can see it in that sense. Also the case is styled after the SPB 143 case. And I mean, it's a great case design. So yeah, I mean, uh, I like the different finishes, you know, switching between polished and brush and the bottom is nicely curved inwards, which makes the watch wear even more comfortably and uh, yeah it also reduces the visual thickness and of course it's got drilled lugs which is something that i think every single tool watch should have so uh yeah because it just makes life so much easier when swapping between bracelet and straps and even just within straps just it, yeah it's just good stuff and finally we have the bracelet which is that one surprising weakness and yeah, in terms of the look and design it's great because i mean it's a it's an oyster style bracelet and the big thing is that it's not super chunky and it has that sort of perfect four millimeter taper unlike the SPP 143 and the San Martin which only taper from 20 to 18 and they are like super chunky both of them. Meanwhile here we have a 62 mass style watch and also we have a good looking bracelet which is a combination that I've been you know looking for for such a long time and I knew that the bracelet was gonna wear well just because I have two other Islanders and I bought an SKX 3 link bracelet from uh, Long Island watch so and they were really really good so I was so pumped for this but I was really surprised when the bracelet just you know didn't feel up to it in that it's just kind of felt light and also each link you know the three parts of the link had a lot more play in them and there was also a lot more gap when the link where the links met the clasp and yeah all that just led to my hair my wrist hair is getting pulled like crazy and yeah throughout you know the mult the countless bracelets i've worn i haven't had a hair pulling issue issues as much as this one i mean i do like to have a bracelet with some lateral movement i mean it does help the watch wear better on the wrist but this bracelet just wasn't right and as a result i had to you know wear it on the strap and then eventually i swapped it out uh, for the skx 013 three link bracelet by just unscrewing the tops and uh, putting it in so since they are pretty much the same thing from the same brand i will give them the benefit of the doubt in this case just because i have I've had so many good experiences with Islander uh, watches and bracelets before. So uh, yeah, I mean, let me know down in the comments, uh, you know, what your experience has been like if you have in the uh, Northport and or any other Long Island watch uh, bracelets for that matter. So yeah, there you have it. It's uh, such an awesome watch. It's pretty much exactly what I would have wanted other than the surprising bracelet issue. So yeah, let me know down in the comments what you think about it. And, uh, and of course, Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button, all the bell buttons and all the good buttons and uh, yeah, because they all help the channel grow. And until the next video, good day.